Well, um, viewers and listeners of Blue Smooth Radio, we're here with Scott Holiday of the Rival Sons, preparing for his show. And isn't is it a little bit exciting? Now you're probably going to play new songs tonight and hear for the f how the audience reacting on the new album. Yeah, that's it. This is really the first full gig. We've done a few support gigs for uh, Aerosmith, and we did uh, some uh, French TV show. Just a couple of few songs here and there, so this is our first proper full gig. We're really excited to bang these new ones out tonight. Um, you laid a CD, a great Western Valkyrie. Um, I noticed on YouTube that you say we're going to be in the studio, and then we surprise every one of us with everything he come up for for new record or new songs. Mm -hmm. Isn't that risky? I think probably, yeah, for, for most bands it would be maybe a, a kiss of death, you never know, but um, it's just the way we've worked from uh, the beginning, from this album, here, <laughs> uh, from, our from our first record all the way through till now, that's just how we've done it, so it's, it's worked for us and it's kept it really fresh and exciting and, and kind of made a new creative thing happen with everybody individually and collectively, so since it works, we'll continue. So you never change a winning team on that one. <laughs> yeah, I we saw might not do that on the next record. I don't know. You know, it might change, but for now, it's working. I saw on stage that you brought a key keyboard player with you live. We did. Yeah, we used a lot of uh, different ideas. He wasn't in the studio with us. We had uh, our buddy Ike Owens uh, from from Long Beach, where we are. He plays with with Jack White and uh, uh, amongst others. He played with the Mars Volta. Mm -hmm. And he was there when we were there, so we invited him down and he played on a bunch of stuff. And then we had uh, our buddy Mike Webb from the Black Crows play on a couple tunes. So when the record was done, we went, okay, we're going to play a bunch of these songs and, and the keyboard and, the, and all this different stuff. is pretty prevalent, organ and piano. We should probably add it and give it to the people the right way. So that's what we did. Oh, we're going to notice tonight. But another question, um, this is the fourth... Uh, complete CD, yeah. about five, five with an EP, if I'm uh, correctly. Right, yeah. In a well, relatively short period, how you cope with the success you got? Is it something you hoped for, dreamed for, or you said no? It comes to me because I earned it. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think it's um, yeah. We definitely hope for it. Anybody who's doing it's hoping for it. You know what I mean? But um, I think there's some level of of um, belief and confidence in what we're, we're doing of course we think this is going to be good we're going to win and um yeah i think we're happy with how things have been going you know all, all musicians and, and artists have these uh delusions these dreams of grandeur you know but um <laughs> this one stayed reasonably uh uh reasonable i think it's it's, it's growing at a very um reasonable rate i think a lot of people see it like overnight success kind of thing but we're still growing now our audience is still growing you know tonight we're playing a, a place here and how do you say this town uh, nijmegen nijmegen megan and i think there's like three or four hundred people and, you know maybe london might be you know closer to two thousand but it's still there's still a long way to go we're in the middle of it right now that's what's one of the things I want to ask. I see on the show you, you play Rock Am Ring, which yeah. is a multi-thousand audience, and as you said, London is 2,000. But I met some people outside. They came especially for this gig because it is cozy, is small, yeah. and that's what they say, then they are on their best. Yeah, well, we wanted to, to come out with the new songs and kind of start in the more intimate gigs and do these kinds of things. So this was a plan we had, and even even in, in London we're doing smaller gigs or everywhere, except for the festivals, which are shy numbers. So we're doing festival gigs and intimate things just to kind of give it to the uh, the real close fans. Because they know when those venues are small, the people that are like really, you know, crazy fans for the band, they'll go get the tickets first, and we know that's <laughs> who's gonna show up, and it makes it a very intimate, close thing. Um. It's not an overnight success, it's also with us, because um, as we are a blues radio station, we're not blues Nazis, <laughs> so we love the, especially the rock side of it, but it came late to us, the Rival Sons, but now it is, it's really what we what we up to, it's the old 70s, 60s bands with a 21st century twist in it. Is the first CD that you release, is that really the sound you aimed for, or just oh. came upon? 
I mean, this is something so close to my own heart. You know, when I was forming this band, that was kind of the idea that I wanted to create a real dirty rock band that didn't leave out the blues because it seemed like that was what was missing from so much rock and roll when I when I started this. You know, and um, I, I, we just wanted to make rock that didn't forget the roll. So yeah, we yeah. we obviously reached back to a time that that it was obviously in there. You know, you go back to you know the stones and you know the faces and and before that the yard birds or even the animals and these kinds of acts the kinks even like you know you go back to this stuff and it's not that we want to uh, emulate these artists but that was really the last great m bullet point I agree. point the flag post where the the role was in the rock there was soul inside of it you know so i think that made our sound to be very akin Maybe a strange question for it, but do you think uh, people who are into rock, rock and roll, or any kind of music should know the grandfathers of blues? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just because it's wonderful, they should know it. I think if you are a big fan of rock and roll, you're going to completely understand why some of those rock bands, what, why you have a Cream and why you have, you know, a Sabbath and why you have a Led Zeppelin. You're going to understand if you go back and listen to people like Muddy Waters and Booker White and, you know, Skip James and all these people, you're going to go, oh my God, they're just doing that, but they're doing it this way, you know? They're just doing some Muddy with the fuzz guitar. I can't believe it. It's wonderful that that heritage should be... Uh, uh, should be reviewed, it should be looked at, and it should be enjoyed, 100%. To give an example, we last, last uh, yesterday we had an, uh, recordings with a blues artist from Australia, and he played Black Betty from Ram Jam. Yeah, love it. And he didn't know it was from Lead Belly originally. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's playing it not knowing, he, he, didn't know. he should go back and listen to Lead Belly, because there's a whole bunch there. Listen to some Charlie Patton, listen to some Lead Belly, absolutely. Back to uh, Rival Sons. Um, it seems to me that you got it all figured out. You got a good PR company. You got a record company. You do the stuff you like. You're you're buttering. You're just buttering about the music, not so much about the stuff. I mean, you still feel relaxed because there's a situation now where the music industry is a little bit reclining, and the bands are all doing themselves mostly. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we all anybody that does a band these days, you have to have a little bit of uh, business sense to it, because that's what we are. We're you know. It's it's a weird thing. Nobody gets into to rock and roll and, and to be in a band on tour to be a businessman. That's kind of the opposite of why we're doing it. But the truth is, it's a business. It's called the record business. So if you don't treat it as so, you only get one thing if you if you don't pay attention. You get taken. That's yeah. it. And it's 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 a bummer because too many people have. If you even go back to somebody like Jimi Hendrix, that guy got really taken. It's terrible, you know. How many bootlegs and bad contracts did he sign? A lot, you know. And and a lot of artists have since then. And um, we're lucky to have a great team. We're lucky to have a lot of great people around us. But we still have to kind of manage our business as well. All the rights secured. For Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. the most important thing. Keep your own rights. Yeah, that's what I tell the kids. Don't sell your publishing. <laughs> this is what the labels want to do nowadays. They want to say, we'll sign you, but we get this much of your publishing and this much of your merchandising, and we also get this little piece of your touring, but you're a signed artist now. Congratulations. Welcome to the big leagues. And that's terrible. They shouldn't be touching any of that stuff. They sell the record. They fund the record, they sell the record, and here they are trying to put their hand in the cookie jar for everything, the way we make money on stuff like this and playing venues. It's the only way we live, especially the publishing. That's really devilish that they're doing that. So that's why I tell the kids. Those three points, you want to know my advice? Those are the three advice points. There's a whole bunch more after that, but just keep your publishing. Try to keep your merch. Definitely keep all your live money. <laughs> that's a uh, hands-on tip from somebody who has to know. <laughs> How are you in the future? What are, are you greedy and creative enough to keep it out for 10, 20 years? Um, who's to tell? I would think so. I would think so. You know, we have a good group of boys. We're kind of like a big family. You know, we're close. And we feel creatively pretty happening right now. So it's uh, too hard to really tell. I don't think anyone could predict 10 years. I don't even know where I'm going to be in four days. <laughs> I can tell you. I guess. This is how I know. Keep one of those hung up on my tour bus. Well, stay grounded. I'm going to thank you for this interview. We're going to use it in our radio show and uh, have a very, very good show tonight. Thank you, sir. Keep playing the blues. God bless you. We do. We are a few of the still out there who do.